Business is life, and life, in many ways, is business. The creation of businesses makes our lives better, but just like the rest of life, business, finance and economics can go wrong. Stock market bubbles are an obvious example. They're dangerous and have ruined lives and economies in the past. The latest run-up in stock prices ended abruptly when investors realized what a lockdown prompted by a global pandemic would do to companies. So how do you recognize an overinflated market when it occurs? Let's go back in time and look at the dot-com bubble and the lessons we can learn from it. The 1990s was a period of rapid technological advancement. In 1993, the release of the Mosaic web browser gave many people access to the internet for the first time. Slowly, personal computers began to transition from being a luxury to becoming a household essential. With this new mass adoption came a gold rush of opportunity which led to the creation of a wave of internet companies. One of these companies, called Netscape, decided to freely distribute their own web browser and it quickly became the industry standard. In a year, the Netscape browser's popularity prompted the company to go public on the stock market. On August 9, 1995, Netscape's initial public offering took the world by storm when their opening stock price of $28 soared to $75 on their first day of trading. While it was unusual for a company to go public before being profitable, the success of Netscape's IPO sent shockwaves around the world. Many people who had just begun using the internet saw the success of Netscape and wanted to capitalize on the growing opportunity. With a decline in interest rates and a new act lowering capital gains taxes in the US, investors now had more capital and became more willing to make speculative investments. This initial displacement is common in any bubble and takes place when something new catches investors' attention. Whether it be a new product, technology or economic policy, a change in the system sets the stage for a bubble to form. But we shouldn't always believe the hype. As time went on, more and more investors rushed to fund new internet companies as they watched the success of those that went public. Many companies that had barely generated any profits began launching initial public offerings on the Nasdaq Stock Exchange. Instead of profits, many of these companies were focused on spending huge amounts of money on advertising to build their market share as fast as possible. This meant many were highly unprofitable, but this appeared not to matter. In 1999, there were 457 IPOs, most of which were dot-com stocks. Of those, 117 doubled in price on their first day of trading. As euphoria continued to hit investors as the price of technology stocks skyrocketed, caution was thrown to the wind. News of price increases spurred investor enthusiasm and word-of-mouth excitement caused further price increases, a positive feedback loop with an increasing stock price reinforcing people's initial decision to buy more of the stock. Common to the second stage of a bubble, investor confidence reaches an all-time high as prices in the market begin to explode with more and more people looking to cash in on the emerging opportunity. The trouble is, some of the hype is genuine, but which bit to believe? Despite doubts about the underlying value of these investments, many began to be drawn to them largely through a fear of missing out. You could call it stock market FOMO. Extreme investor enthusiasm continued to drive prices up to levels that were not supported by fundamentals, but instead rested on psychological factors, irrational exuberance and overconfidence. Figuring out when the bubble will enter its final stage and burst isn't easy. Noticing the warning signs can be especially difficult given the growing enthusiasm people share as the prices continue to rise. The best way is to dig deeper and see whether these decisions are supported by fundamentals or are indeed just irrational exuberance. As the bubble expanded rapidly, things would soon change. With the year turning to 2000 and the Y2K computer bug no longer a worry, the US Federal Reserve announced plans to aggressively raise interest rates. This led to major stock market volatility as analysts disagreed on whether or not technology companies would be affected by higher borrowing costs. On March the 10th, the Nasdaq had reached an all-time high of more than 5,000 points, a five-fold increase in five years. Just three days later, news broke that Japan had once again entered a recession. When a global event such as that occurs and significantly damages investor confidence, many people start panic selling. With no more investors willing to buy at elevated prices and a massive sell-off underway, the bubble had burst. Once a bubble has burst, it will not inflate again.
The panic that follows a bubble can be devastating. Often, this fear and uncertainty can spread to other asset classes and can even cause a recession. Technology stocks began losing value faster than they had gained it. By the fall of 2000, most internet stocks had declined in value by 75%, wiping out $1.75 trillion in value. The majority of the dot-com companies that once had multi-million dollar valuations began to fold. So what can we take away from all this? When it comes to new technologies, people are eager not to miss out on the next big thing, and seeing the winnings of others can further this urge to act quickly. Warren Buffett, a greatly respected investor, famously stayed out of all this. His reasoning was simple, but something we can all learn from. The internet industry wasn't within his area of expertise, and because of this, he simply wasn't going to buy those types of stocks. He didn't buy into the hype, despite the world going mad for internet stocks around him. So maybe what you need is a sense of perspective and careful decision-making. For most people, especially non-professional investors, that means a very cautious investment strategy. There's nothing new about bubbles. History finds a way of repeating itself. And for as long as new stories continue to emerge that inspire mass enthusiasm for new types of investment, we will see more of them.